Welcome back everybody to Pole Barn Garage and the return of the Silver Dollar Chevy Stepside Pickup. I'm going to show you how you can fix your interior on a relatively low budget if you happen to have a square body Chevy Pickup. That's half of the original seat. This is half of the seat out of the farm truck. With those two, we should be able to make one decent seat. I have a new seat cover from LMC. I have some new door panels. They're the wrong door panels, but I found some. Got carpet for the door panels, a new steering wheel, and some dye, and we're gonna make this interior look like new. Also, I have to change the power window regulator in that door to a crank regulator from the original door. That's gonna be the hardest part. I noticed I had a brand new windshield put in this thing. We really spent the big bucks. Oh. Well, the antenna's not going to plug in. Goodbye. Anyway, let's start with something incredibly difficult. Putting a brand new rear view mirror on. And it's broken. Aha. Well, job's done. Let's go home. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, this is their stereo installation. Boy, that's really something. So, uh, bye. Goodbye. Now the truck probably won't run. <laughs> so before we really dig into too much here, I need to do a couple things. I need to tighten up this shifter here. We need to respray the ring for it. Uh, I think I have a better boot for it somewhere. See all this surface rust and stuff in here? We need to scuff that up and then rattle can it, you know? Same thing goes for the dash pad. Like, it's in pretty good shape, I think. And I was kind of thinking if we just wiped it off with some prep saw and then masked off the window, and then I have some of this, uh, this is actually four dark red panel dye, but it matches the original red pretty well. I figured we could probably try to re-dye the dash and, you know, save it, try to save some money that way. Wiping off the dash with some prep saw, and that's going to remove any kind of oil or wax, you know, residue crap from people using armor all and stuff on it over the years, and it's going to really help our vinyl dye stick. Honestly, it doesn't even look that bad once we wipe it off with this stuff, does it? Yeah. I don't know. I think it might be worth spraying anyway. Well, I'm going to install the shifter boot same way GM did with self-tapping screws. Well, I'm back at it today. Sorry for the break of continuity. We had to go to the dentist to get a bunch of fillings put in. I just didn't really feel like working on the truck again. So I'm masking off everything in there to re-dye the dash paint the inside of the cab. I'm going to be uh, just dyeing, you know, little plastic pieces like this with the red, red metallic dye for a 68 Mustang. I mean, it's damn close. I got this stuff on clearance from Scott Drake at Holly a while back and get to put it to some use. Let's see if we can't refresh this dash pad a little bit. The easy way. And the key here is multiple light coats. So just Kind of dust it. The thing is, when you're spraying red, it doesn't matter if it's spray paint, vinyl dye, paint in a car, whatever. If you spray red, the more layers you put on, the darker it gets. And so obviously we don't want to make it too dark. So we're going to have to be able to use a little prejudice in how we apply this, right? It looks pretty damn good. <laughs> but it's the little things like this that can really make the difference on your car. Don't let people say you got to spend 500 bucks on a dashboard. It's got one crack in it. That's totally good enough for the quality of this truck. I had some door seals left over from another project, so just installed that. Trim it to fit, see if the door still closes. We'll do that while we wait for the dash to dry. Will the door shut? Hey! Ooh, that one shuts really nice now. Oh, damn. The uh, driver's door is the one that's the real problem child, so. I guess we'll see what that one does, but I'm happy with that. Door seals on that side. It's a door slammer, but it does shut. I don't think any amount of adjusting the striker is going to fix it either, because it's already kicked out of the bottom. I can't come out with it anymore. It is what it is on this thing. We all know what this thing looks like. And, uh, there's just no getting around it, so whatever. At least it's got weather stripping in it. I'm going to wipe down the back of the cab and the dash, the metal part of the dash, with some prep saw. And then we'll go ahead and shaker bomb that. Probably have to mask off the back window, I suppose. It ain't gonna be perfect, but the truck ain't perfect, so it's good enough for who it's for. I got my PPE on. Let's go ahead and try to make this look a little bit better.
<coughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't like the satin at all. So I got some of this high performance gloss black Rust-Oleum. This stuff is good stuff. And also, I got an actual N95 because this stuff is even stronger than the other spray paint. That other stuff was taking me for a ride. Whew. I can still smell it through this. I think having that satin as a base is actually pretty good though. Yeah, that does look a lot better. Alright. Well, this turned out freaking great. Nice. Cool. I think uh, we're all done with the painting now. We can start assembling. I'm going to paint my brand new glove box here that I definitely didn't just rob out of my brown 78 truck. Definitely not. I'm definitely not at my wit's end about spending money on this truck. Look, now it's for the step side. It's just that easy. One thing I did spend some bucks on was a nice steering wheel. I'm kind of picky when it comes to that. I guess, I don't know, are the wheels turned slightly? Uh, no, they're straight. They're straight? Yeah. We're gonna fix this the way I always fix it, by breaking off the horn. Because we're <laughs> gonna have a horn anyways. There we go. See, modern problems require modern solutions. If you want your steering wheel to be on straight. Nice. Cool. Good. Put this on. Then we put the big nut on it. Over that one. To torque this to spec. And there we go. That looks pretty good on there. Yeah, it does. Cool. Now we just need everything else. I have the wrong door panel here. Uh, these are for later trucks, and that's because these doors are off of a later truck. Also, the color red is not even close to the dash, but I'm out of vinyl dye. Uh, so we're just going to have to live with it for right now, and then we'll, you know, touch them up when I get some more dye. These are like the really, really cheap ones. Uh, they don't, they're not quite made the same as the originals. Like, clearly the color isn't even close. They get the job done. The original ones have clips all the way around. These only have two to hold them on. Wait a second. Where's the window crank holes? That, what? Does it come? You have to do it yourself. I guess that's it right there, that, that circle. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we have to drill those. I don't know how big this needs to be. How about like, uh oh. That's probably right. Probably just drilled a hole in a brand new door panel and destroyed it. That's great. Let me tell you, I've done it. You know what I don't have? What? An armrest. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, it does, and that red doesn't match at all. Hey, we drilled that in the right spot, so. Yeah. We got that going for us. Let's see if I can get this pin to line up. That one did. 175 bucks for both door panels. Uh, as opposed to like $400, there might have been a reason for that. All right, it's done. Turns out that was a mistake. Don't shut the door. Okay, there we go. So don't shut the door until it's attached. Oh, I'm gonna undo all of my work because I just can't live with myself that this red doesn't match at all. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just cut it right off, I mean. I ordered four different kinds of red vinyl dye. I'm sure one of them's a little bit darker than that, and at least it'll look a little better. Well, I can go ahead and throw this kick panel in here, and yes, I am putting off changing the window regulator, because that's gonna suck. You know, for some reason, this kick panel uh, doesn't fit anymore. It's like the floor's in a different spot, but that's not possible, right? You know, we'll just, uh, clearly this kick panel is defective. Okay, I don't know why I thought a pair of scissors would cut this. But, <laughs> um, I mean, it did cut it, but <laughs> it's a miracle. It fits now. Why, however, did that happen? Anyway, I'll install it with some self tapping screws. Voila! Installed. Nobody's the wiser. This is probably one of my least favorite jobs. 
is pulling window regulators, especially power regulators. Looks like someone's done us the favor of pulling the motor out of it at least. These are always pain in the ass. Well, we'll just pull all the bolts out. What? Come back to the I broke my thumb doing this once. It was great. window. Fun fact, in 1982, all GM cars went to a thinner window glass. The glass in that window is like an eighth of an inch thicker than all later ones because of weight savings, because of uh, government mandated fuel regulations or whatever. So uh, if you've ever had a window break and you thought it shouldn't have, you can blame the federal government like you can for those things. Come on, you dirty rugs. Okay, so you just gotta pull that off. No big deal. But anyway, to the scrap pile with that. Now, let's pull it out of that door. I'm sure that's gonna be easy. Figured while I was in here, I could put a new window felt in it. And if I feel real antsy, I might even put a new window felt on the other side. But we'll see. Good trucks get new parts. Bad trucks get scrapped. Uh, be gone! No, let go of it. How much thicker the 1976 glass is compared to the later bottle glass. Oh, yeah. Much heavier, a lot better quality. We'll probably put its original window back in it. Now, whether or not this regular is good is another question entirely. Hmm, um, not really, pretty wore out. I have another door somewhere, I think. Well, we sourced this regulator out of uh, the old farm truck, actually, and uh, it's in quite a bit better shape. It's got a little slop to it, but not bad. But obviously, the hard part here is getting the window on. One spot in this window track that you can install the rollers, but you gotta put them in the right order. There. All right, those simultaneously trying to line up the other track as well. That's the window crank. All right, get the window crank in. And now we're gonna roll it. And this is the track. And try to roll the window until it makes this other track here. Something like that. You have a track on the door and a track on the window. So yeah. it is installed. I guess I should have cleaned that out before we installed it. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, people know what to expect by now. I'm pretty dumb. Now I have to figure out how to adjust the track. I have to get that to where the window rides in this channel all the way up. And that's highly adjustable because they knew that none of this crap would ever fit together. Well, must have got it halfway close. Looks like it works pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Numbers matching window. I'm kind of out of things to do inside of the truck for the moment. Got the seat cover inside getting warm so I can mess with it. However, I do have tail lights for it. Now you can't buy tail lights for these things, but semi trucks, GM like heavy duty trucks, still use the same tail light that they used back in the 70s, which is the same as the step side tail light. So, all we got to do is remove these semi-truck brackets off of these and try to put them on our new brackets we have for this and try to bolt them on. I'll probably worry about, you know, wiring them up, you know, later. There we go. 
Took me a minute to figure out how these things went on. Yeah, sure enough, the exact same light. One little difference. Um. <laughs> oh, did I use the wrong... I probably put the wrong side on it. It is upside down. The words are upside down. It's supposed to go on like this. That looks dumb. Is it supposed to be like that? No. Let's look at a picture. It's like they're supposed to be this way. Don't believe me? Google it. Works for me. This is a 78 and up bed, actually. But uh, even though the truck's 76, taillights mount differently on them. And if you need taillights for them, they don't make them anymore. However, you can just pick you up a set of these bad boys. 40 bucks for both of these. Pretty good deal, I think. Oh, those are on. We'll wire them up. Uh, not right now, because I don't feel like doing it. Let's uh, let's prep the seat for recovering. So what you got to do uh, to get anything ready to recover? Well, for one, actually, we need to unbolt the tracks. But also, all seat covers are attached with hog rings, and these little bastards here. And that's all that holds your seat on. You got to pull all the old ones out, and then strip the covers off before we can really even get started. Well, it is now the next day, and turns out this Napa Red is pretty close to the correct color instead of that bright red. So let's go ahead and get these door panels sprayed, and then we'll go cover the seat while we wait for that to dry. Now, one good thing about ordering red door panels, at least, is it'll be a lot easier to cover it. Now, if you order black door panels, they are cheaper. And had I known that these wouldn't match, I definitely would have gone that route, but that'll all work out. This SEM color coat stuff is like probably the best vinyl dye money can buy right here. I was trying to uh, dye the seat belts, but I think that's kind of a waste of time. I come out here to grab the uh, seat cushions here, but uh, you know, I actually hit these with a couple more coats and they, uh, this SEM dye is actually working on the seat belts. That's, uh, I mean, it's not great. I know the light sucks in here, but you know, take my word for it. Like, they are red at least. That's a win. I brought these in the house. It's warmer in here. It's like 50 outside, but it's just too, that's a little bit too chilly. These have been sitting inside, laid out flat, so we get the creases out of them. I may have to go get the heat done yet. You gotta get the front on and then flip it upside down. Never mind the mouse nest that I left in it. Who am I to evict them? The big thing here is to keep this pipe. You know, that's kind of where like the back of your knee goes. So you want that pipe to be on the front. Let's see. This one's pretty tight fit. The factory uses a wire bale inside each half of the seat. Now these mystery brand ones just have this plastic thing and it just <laughs> this is supposed to slide over and clip onto the inside of the frame uh, and it may but that's not near as secure as hoggering it all the way across but we don't really have that luxury so I guess I'll try to heat it up We are sort of attached. We've got the plastic things on the rails of the seat frame now. And uh, I, the sides are actually, this is too wide now. This is stitched way too far out. Um, there's nothing I can really do about that. So I'm just hog ringing the seat cover straight to the rail, but whatever. Bolt this seat track on just so it kind of halfway will help hold the seat cover on in this corner because we got more stretching to do yet. And now I just got to go fishing in this brand new seat cover. Oh, there it is. Always cut an X if you're making a hole in a piece of fabric, by the way. What I'm doing now is just making sure that this piping 
is straight. Sometimes you see amateur seat cover jobs and you know you see the pipe on the seat runs like this <laughs> you know so you try to try to get away from that I mean it doesn't have to be perfect it never was but try to make it half-ass decent. Did I forget to mention that this front uh, plastic thing that you know cheapest and insists on using uh, it doesn't work that one's on real tight and this one's loose as can be again it's not a me thing it's a whatever the hell this is thing since we don't have the luxury of being able to hog ring it and attach it we'll just shoot some self tappers into it instead it's like hog ringing but actually a little easier I got both seat tracks in but whenever you pull this seat track it's supposed to pull this seat track right well, the wire's clearly broken. So, anyway, I stole this piece of fence from my neighbor's property. I mean, yeah. why are there cows in the yard now? Huh. Oh, free beef. Anyway. Mm -hmm. oh, this is going to work for sure. We'll go for the furthest one. Comfy. October 1st, 1975 is when this seat was made. GMC truck back. So this isn't even out of that truck. It's out of some other truck. No wonder it was in decent shape. See if I can mess this one up. There we go. So this one fits pretty decently. I don't, I don't like how these corners look. But I'm not really sure what I can do about it. They're both that way. <laughs> Stretch the front part first over here and then hook to these bars. That's all you hook to on the top, on the back part of the seat. Sometimes these are two man jobs or man and woman. We're back out here. Looks pretty damn good. Let's bolt the two halves together and uh, put it in the truck. This is challenging to say the least. Find it. I think I found it. Kind of pain in the ass, isn't it? I know. That seat looks good, though. It's got the last bolt in, and it should. It's actually not that bad. Yeah. Good. You're able to save these seat belts, I guess. Are they going to do anything? No. But are you dead anyway in a crash in this? Yes. pretty comfy in here now anyway. What now? Um, glove box. Door panels. Yeah. I need you to re-sand that glove box and fish eyed real bad. It does look pretty good. JD's sanding the glove box over there. And uh, maybe I'll go ahead and throw a door panel on. Well, I managed to find two armrests for this. Thank God for that because they're like $200 for new ones apparently. Anyway, let's clean these off with the super clean. And then we'll dye them red, bolt them on. Door panels are done. Go show them the door panel. Wow. It's actually pretty nice. I, I I literally just stripped that glove box to bare metal. And paint won't stick. And I'm going to use the... Oh, God, that's a very bright red. I bought the wrong color red, but I'm going to go ahead and use it just to use it as a base. Because it's a lot easier to cover red with red. But I have very, very little of the correct color left after doing all the seat belts. So we'll just let this kind of be our primer, as it were. Back out here today, and our repurposed armrests are on, looking pretty good. But uh, we got to go get a couple other things. It needs a brake light switch so I can finish putting the dash together and door lock knobs, oddly. And I know just where to get them. Back here, I have stashed the 77 Caprice station wagon. And uh, before you go whining about, oh, he's trashing another nice car. No, this thing, the frame is rotted in half back here. Probably going to enduro it eventually. But what we really need, the, uh, the brake light switch out of this thing should work in that truck. Right there. Aha. 
Oh yeah. It's also got some pretty decent door lock knobs that we can rob. It's paying for itself already. There we go. Things are getting pretty serious now. Oh boy. Pro grade stuff going on right here, folks. In a turn of events that should surprise nobody, uh, that had a brake light switch in it the entire time. I just saw this empty hole here and thought, well, it needs a brake light switch. And also this pigtail that goes to nothing. And I kind of thought that it might, you know, be unhooked, but uh, nope, it's all there and accounted for. What the hell's this for? Who knows? Who cares? Lower dash is all assembled, back in shape. Now we got to put these carpet panels on the doors. I forgot I even had these. But that'll really finish off the doors nice. Hopefully these don't get in the way of our uh, custom made rocker panels. Uh, we don't actually need them except for the other door has a gigantic hole cut in it. Uh, well, and, and it kind of needs it. And we'll install them just like GM did with a plethora of self-tapping screws. still shuts. When door panel carpets are in, that's done. The only thing we got left is clean up work, the glove box which is still wrinkled up and destroyed, uh, and wire the tail lights. So let's do that. Well, there's a trailer light harness I had laying around and uh, there's the wires for the tail lights of the truck and let's make some tail lights happen. Okay. Alright, we turn the headlights on Jay. All right. Bad ground, but we got power there, so brown as headlights. Try to hit the brake pedal. Are you hitting it? Yeah. Uh, let off. Hit them. Okay. Dark green as brakes. Okay, I don't have any power for the right turn signal, weirdly. But we can worry about that later. So cool. Dark green, brake light, brown, headlight yellow left turn signal, light green right turn signal. Successfully butt connected into the truck harness. Let's run it back there. Not gonna do a big deep dive into wiring here, but one little thing to point out. If you're ever unsure which one is the ground on like an unknown set of taillights, for example, uh, there's two black wires, right? So I just picked one. I know the ground strap goes on this top bolt back here. Yeah, the meter. The one I've grabbed is the ground wire. So just a little tip, little tip for you. JD's about got the glass cleaned up in this thing. Thank God. Looks so much better already. You can go ahead and fix that window while you're here. Huh? See? Uh oh. Hmm. Well, why'd you break it? When I break it. God. Working on getting them wired up. You got driving lights, brake lights work. Should be done here shortly. Hey Jay, can you pull the headlights? So I gotta put the lens back on that one, but they're off. No, they're not. So I've been out here for like two hours trying to figure out how the hell or why the hell the lights I have voltage back there, but then it just goes away as soon as I try to put a load on it, right? Well, I think I found out why. There's like at least three pieces of wire spliced in here. Uh, and it's all just twisted together and electrical taped. I got some work to do under here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix this wiring right. And uh, well, I'll get back with you, maybe even tomorrow, I don't know, but I'm just, I just a little flustered right now. We have lights, so that's nice. Everything works, it's good, it's settled. Uh, I gotta put a headlight in it, and we need bulbs in these. These are, they're just burned out. One of our marker lights is burned out. JD got the interior nice and clean. I think it looks pretty presentable in here now. We need a headlight. I'm damn sure I'm not paying for one. So uh, I'm gonna rob one out of the white van over here. Surely one of them's good. I need an 11.57 out of this too. And hell, I don't know. Maybe the marker lights are the right ones too. It's gonna save me like 40 bucks on light bulbs. Just a bad bulb. No big deal. I managed to scavenge all the bulbs we need out of that van, which is it's being used for parts, but it's gonna it's all going to a different van for for you know it, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. 
that glove box wrinkled again. You know what? It's done. It's fine. It's, it is what it is at this point. Why? How? I don't, the primer's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame it on Rust-Oleum. Like, it goes on pretty good. I don't know. Let's see if we get this marker working, and then change out our other headlight over there. Yep. Burned out. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. That's fixed. I guess I should have done this before I put the whole truck together. <sighs> I've never been one to make my life easier. Come on. Sounds like a beautiful wind chime. And there we are. There's one final thing that we desperately need to do. And that's clean up all of this polishing compound. Add all the nooks and crannies of the truck. Do all this detail work. Especially inside the door jams. Like that. And it should all wipe off pretty easy. Which means, I'll probably just slip JD 20 bucks to do it. This is what it is. I'll fix it some other time, but we need a glove box for now. Literally like three days of problems with the glove box and I can't use it. This is a non-AC glove box. That's an AC glove box. On the bright side, JD's cleaning up our cool vintage Chevy floor mats. Those are pretty neat. He's using the super clean to do it. Those look pretty good. Yeah. yeah, dry them off and then ready yep. for install. Yep. Super clean, works wonders. Well, I bought a new glove box. Glove box liner to replace the broken hinge on the original one is $75. Or well, I just bought a complete glove box for $75. So, anyway, that's going to be like a week before it gets here, though. So, I guess it won't be totally finished, but I think it's pretty damn close. Let's install these. Very hard, very technical. But it is necessary. And with that, we can call this interior completed compared to what it looked like before. So we got functioning lights, we got a complete interior, sans glove box, and uh, I think it's ready to try to drive to Kevin's house and go back home. Home. We've driven it three miles. It's, it's going to be a hell of a will it run. Like, we built the truck from the ground up and haven't actually driven it anywhere. So, I don't know. But we will see if it'll drive there. Check it out, that'll probably be the next, that will probably be the next thing you see on this truck is us trying to drive it up there, so stay tuned for that. And, uh, oh God, wish us luck. Shirtstampmerch.com, buy merch, please. Shirts, stuff like that, we keep it as cheap as we can, but every shirt, every sticker, every banner you buy helps the channel big time. So check it out.